Um, my task, and I don't have any slides, uh, um, is to talk to you about development. Uh, development, economic development, the, develop, the study of very poor people or very poor countries. Um, the, to me, it's got to be the most exciting field in economics at the moment. Um, it's an area in which there's a ton of really, really, really important questions and a lot of innovation. And certainly some of the, when one looks at the students coming out of um, um, the top PhD programs in the country, a very large fraction of them doing development. That was not true 20, 25 years ago. The field was moribund, and there are good reasons for why it was moribund. And right now, it's just totally taken off. Everything is global all the time, no matter where you turn, no matter what newspaper you look at, and that's happening to economics as well. Almost all the issues that Chris raised uh, with regard to environmental um, economics sort of come up in one way or another in development, and in one sense, environmental development, and I think almost every field shares a lot in common with each other, which is, as economists, what we try to do is bring the tools of economics to address important questions, rather than try and segregate ourselves into the economics of the 1720s, the economics of the 1730s, the economics of white writers in uh, 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 in Europe who died in 1825, and all the rest of these little silos that appear in other sub-disciplines. Our goal is to take the sense of what you've learned to basic tools in economics and take them to understand important problems. And that's why development is so exciting. There are tons and tons of problems, huge numbers of problems, and we've learned a lot. So as economists, we actually have something to say, but what we have to say has to be nuanced, it has to be thoughtful, and it really has to try and bring both what we know from theory, what we need to measure, which is hard, and what methods we've developed as economists to the table to then answer the sorts of questions. But there was one event that I experienced that absolutely totally changed my view of what economists could do. I didn't know then that's what economists could do. It was while I was an undergraduate at your stage. I took a class in development and I thought, oh my god, these guys are completely missing the boat. And that was because when I was uh, about your age, I um, uh, was confronted by, um, uh, I was told to go to a, a village, a uh, kraal, a uh, little cluster of um, huts in Zimbabwe where I was uh, born and raised. And I was told to go and see the people who live there. And I sort of, sort of like, shy, there's no door or anything, there's just a, a bunch of stones around the edge of the kraal. And I shouted, and the, the, the team I was with shouted, and nothing happened, nothing happened. Then a little, um, what looked like a little three-year-old boy came out, and we asked him where his parents were. We knew that there must be something odd, because there were no footsteps, because people sweep the uh, floor, the, the dirt around the huts. There were no footsteps um, up to the stones. So no one had left. He said, oh, they were sleeping. And they'd been sleeping for three days. And they died of hunger. Not only had they died of hunger, but his little sister had died of hunger as well. He wasn't three, he was actually five. And I looked at it and I thought, how can we live in a world where there's plenty of food, even in Zimbabwe at that time at least, maybe not today, and um, have the coexistence of people with plenty of food and people who die of hunger. And when I was looking, reading through sort of development literature, it just didn't make sense to me that we had all these great theories and these ideas, and yet still these people die of hunger. And like environment, development is not a place to read them and say it's terrible for people who are. Development is a place to say, what can we as economists bring to the table to ask the question and answer the question, why do people die of hunger in a world where we've got a global epidemic of obesity? Um, so the um, questions that you, know, you would come up with, the answers you might come up with right away, well, they crop fail. But why did they crop fail? So was this because these guys didn't have the right techniques for uh, um, um, uh, growing food in a pretty harsh environment where there's no water? Do they not have the right uh, infrastructure? They weren't, uh, they weren't irrigation ch uh, channels or something like that? Or was it that there were poor markets, so they couldn't sell whatever they had or buy food when they needed it or something like that? Or was it that they didn't have access to the resources, the insurance mechanisms, the credit markets uh, that would allow them to actually smooth the consumption over time? What was going on? And as economists, we can actually answer those questions. We can look at data and address them. And that's the sort of thing we do as economists all the time. So is it that it was weak infrastructure? These guys didn't know what the right uh, agricultural tools, technology, et cetera, use of fertilizer, and so on were. They threw a bunch of fertilizer down and burned their crops, something like that. Well, if that's the case, what we need to do as economists is work on, is that, can we do some form of cost-benefit analysis, program evaluation, that would tell us, was that worth, was, is it worth our while to bring those tools to these areas 
Or is that really not the solution to the problem? Or if it's the other side, if it's that these guys didn't have an appropriate safety net, are there ways for us to build a safety net? What is it that makes for a safety net when you're dirt poor? Um, is it that we have public safety nets? Probably as well, we doesn't have the source resources to have a public safety net as you have in this country. But maybe they should have some sort of uh, uh, safety net in the face of massive catastrophic failure. But safety nets have problems, as you all know. You know we um, 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 see the uh, discussion on, on, on uh, uh, the hill in this country about how giving people unemployment insurance is terrible because they get uh, people deciding not to work. And it's much better to keep on the unemployment benefit than having to go to work. And there's all sorts of issues of moral hazard and adverse selection, the kinds of things you can learn about in any standard economics class. So we need to worry about that. But maybe there are other things that we can think about. So for example, what is the most likely source of insurance that you would have in Zimbabwe? Your family. And so what happens is when your crop fails, your family who don't necessarily cohabit with you or don't even live in the same area, in fact we have lots of evidence, people move to different parts of the country to share risks. So your family provides resources for you when things are not going so well. When your crop fails, your family or others in, uh, around you will help you. Well, in this case, the family didn't help. And the reason the family didn't help was that the mother and father were actually cousins. And so they were thrown out of their community, and they were basically exiled to this awful place that I was living, in the middle of nowhere, and no one even spoke the same language they spoke. And so that's why this family uh, ended up in uh, uh, such dire straits.